So the next block is H2 and it is modified in the book. What I did here is I didn't know what my fabric was going to be at the time and these are the ones that have the color in them and so I marked a directional mark in case I used a directional fabric. It turned out that I didn't but I still have these marks here. The thing, the biggest thing is, is that these two triangles, which go here, are different sizes than all of these. So when I did my pieces, there wasn't that much of a difference, but I labeled them as an outer triangle. So it's just a lot easier to see if I marked it when I went to get my pieces out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base the edges around this giant square and put it aside so that I don't have to worry about it because this is the last thing you do. But I'm going to treat these as rows this way. And so um, I'll assemble these and I'll assemble them in halves and then I'll connect the halves. It just makes it a lot easier. And then I'll base these and then this will be individual appliques separate from this giant diamond and then I'll applique the diamond down and then place the triangles after the fact. So when I base my triangles I'm going to do them all the same way so in the interest of consistency I'm going to start with my arrow up and then I'm going to base this side like that and then I'm going to base this side and I'm going to get that so that my tag will go to the right and then I'm gonna base this last one and so then if I wanted to know where my point was it would be here opposite this flat edge with the two tags this way I know that my tags are gonna nest as best they can um, when I do the white and then the white and the orange are sitting next to each other these are gonna coincide these two tags but, you know, a lot of that can't be helped. So, but at least I'll know that it's consistent from that standpoint. So I got all my triangles basted for the bottom section of this middle diamond. Got these two taped, and then I'm going to attach these two. And then I'm going to connect all these in this formation. And then I'm going to join these to that bit. And I'm going to end up with the opposite of this because this is the top portion of this diamond. I got both sections put together and I'm going to attach this to this piece. Okay, a note about the middle of this. I have gone to my seam here and I got these six different points coming into the middle here. If this dark is overlapping too much, let's see if I can make it do it, then it's going to look like this is off kilter. If I can make it look bad. So it's kind of look makes it look off center. And that's why the crisp edges come in really handy at this point. And so I'm going to connect this here, and then I'm going to take my stitch from this corner to this corner over here on the orange, and I'm going to do that a couple times to close this up. And I'm also going to do that here to close this up, because it'll make this look better if it can be as crisp as possible. And actually this one looks decent. The other one isn't that great, but hey, I'm hoping it'll even out when it's... So this one's just a little off. I would like this, this to be a little farther in, but I'm not going to fix it. I'm hoping that once it's quilted, it'll kind of fall together. Okay, so when I go on the back here, I take a little bit of this side. And it's really easy to get too much fabric on the bottom side. There we go. There. And then 
think that's the edge. And I think that's the edge. So I'm going to pull this. And then I'm going to check it. That looks pretty decent right there. So I'm going to do it again in the same spot. So now my thread is on the orange side and I'm going to come across so you can see this. I'm going to come from here to here and I'm going to try to get this on the edge as much as possible to this edge. And then the trick is to make sure your thread goes through that diagonal and doesn't get stuck on the seams or the tags or whatever. Here we go. And this is fabric bits. Okay, so I'm going to do that same thing again so then I can have a stitch going across here. Okay, and then I'm going to check again, and it's looking pretty decent here, and there's not a big, a deep, big hole. <laughs> so, I am going to just keep going on. Okay, so now I've got my diamond connected, and I'm going to take my big giant square, and I am going to applique this down. Let me show you how I attach this. So the first thing I do is I will take this and get this really close to the edge. If I hold this here and check it at this end for size, so this is going to be, I'm going to do this here and this here. Okay. So I'll get this close. And basting this, you need to have, if you have one point of connection, it's going to pivot. So what I decided to try, and I've been doing since my A row, is I decided to staple it. Because it's paper on paper with fabric in between, and that way you don't get any pivoting. And so I will flip it over and push my staple down. So it doesn't end up in my finger. <laughs> Had that happen many times. Go to the other end here. And it is a little, it is pooching up a little bit, but that's okay because that's going to work itself in. Okay, so I'm going to go to this and I'm going to staple that down. So then I've got this, it's kind of poochy here. So I will put another staple in between here and then another one on this side and I've put them in the wrong spot before so I just pick them out of the back and then redo it and that's the beauty of the fact that it's on cardstock so this one's sticking up so I'll push this one down and that one's okay. So now I have staples that I won't go into my finger. And so then I'm going to, I'm going to start in the middle of a big side because it's easier to start on an open section of straightness. And I will tuck these under and applique all around it. A note about taking out the staples. So I took my scissors and I pried up my staples. But when you pop them through, be very very careful because they can snag your fabric and so I try to make them as straight as possible before I take it out. Now you will have a hole but usually it will steam out. If you're worried about this then you can test it out on your fabric beforehand but test it on paper because your fabric with a staple without paper is just going to get stuck. When basting the outer triangles, the sides, this is this one of the sides, the bottom that says outer is the part that touches the, the diamond. 
and it's a different size than the other two sides so it needs to be differentiated and so what I'm going to do is what I did with the other ones is the bottom is going to be this straight edge with two tags so I'll put that against my diamond when I attach it to the paper to applique it down and now my H2 block is all done.